Hi everyone, I hope you're all having a great week. A little while ago, my niece Ali asked if we could paint a unicorn together. Since I've never seen a unicorn in real life, I thought the best place to start would be by drawing a horse. My nieces have pretty advanced drawing skills, but even for them, and even for me, drawing a horse is a pretty difficult thing to do. So I thought the best thing would be to transfer an image of a horse using the techniques I'm showing you right now. Covered the back of my photocopy with charcoal and then using a pencil, I simply transferred the image by tracing over the image of the horse. Once the image was transferred onto my watercolor paper, I used a fine tip waterproof marker to trace over the outline of my image. Then using an eraser, I removed the rest of the charcoal marks. I want to keep my painting process very loose and easy, so for the most part I'll be painting with my watercolors using a wet on wet technique. By painting wet on wet, this means my paper will most of the time be wet and the paints will run into each other as I'm applying them. This past week I discovered an artist by the name of Cinnamon Cooney known as the Art Sherpa. In one of the videos I watched by the Art Sherpa, she was painting a colorful whimsical cow. I loved how loose and fun her painting was and it inspired me to create this painting of a horse. And it's also the inspiration for what I hope to turn into a unicorn. Like I mentioned before, I've never actually seen a unicorn in real life, but I imagine that they're really colorful creatures and they're certainly very whimsical. And I think painting in this format really will help to transmit the essence of what a unicorn should look like in my mind. My niece Ali is 8 years old and her sister Brielle is 10 years old. Like I mentioned before, both of them have really good drawing skills. And they are actually really good at painting too. But I wanted to keep this process as simple as possible for them. This painting I'm making right now is sort of a trial run for the day I make a unicorn with them. If circumstances allow, it'll be fun for us to have a chance to do this together in person. If not, I'm sure we'll figure out a way to paint together either over FaceTime or Zoom. Maybe my niece Patricia would enjoy this too. For most of this painting process, I've been using three main colors. Nickel Azo Yellow, Quinacridone Magenta, and Turquoise Blue. I really like these colors because they're very vibrant and bright. They also mix well together to create other colors. As you can see, I'm not being overly precious about my color application, and I'm not being overly careful about making sure I stay within the lines. This is supposed to be a whimsical painting, and I want to keep it loose. As I continue adding layers to my painting, I slowly but surely start to darken my layers so that the colors are more bright and vibrant. Using magenta in its less diluted form is a great way to create shading and contrast. I'm now going to start working on my background and the first thing I do to do this is add some splatters of water on my page. Then I start to add some yellow to that water.
work on my horse's eyes, I've decided to use the color indigo. But if you really wanted to stick to working with three colors only, you could simply mix your magenta and your blue to create a dark purple. Adding this darker blue to shaded areas in my painting is starting to create more contrast. Contrast stimulates the eyes and it makes a painting more visually appealing. I've decided I want to create more contrast in my painting, so I'm going to be using this same indigo to add some whiskers and hairs on my horse's face. I want to start brightening up my colors again. As watercolors dry, they become lighter. And the more diluted your paints are, the lighter they will dry. So if you want more intense color, it's important to put less water in your paint. Now I want to start adding to my background again. By adding some blue to the wet yellow on the paper, I'm going to start creating some green streaks in my background. Using a damp mop brush, I can blend out some of those streaks. While the paint was still wet, I added some splatters of magenta on the background. I want to add more splatters in different colors, but I don't want to get splatters all over my horse's face, so I've decided to cover it with some paper towel. Once I'm done with these splatters, I'll let my painting dry. I'm on the final stretch of my painting, so I've pulled out my paint pens and I'm going to start adding some dimension to my painting by using black and white. Until the paint from my paint pen is dry, it's actually water soluble. So here I'm using a brush to blend some of that into my horse's eye and make it a little bit darker. This has really been a fun little project to create and I really think my nieces and I will have fun recreating it together. Look what magically appeared in my art studio just a day later. Unicorns really are pretty magical. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful week and happy creating!